My name is Doug Moe. I'm with iConvergence. If you're watching this video, that means we're working with your IT staff to roll out a new phone system. Today, we're going to show you how to use the phone that's going to be sitting on your desk. You ready? Let's go. So one thing I can tell you about these phones is the screen is your friend. As long as you watch the screen, you can always tell what call I'm on, what call may be coming in, and what options I may have at any given time. At the top of the screen, you'll notice there's a bar across. It'll always tell you the date and the time. And in the upper right, it'll tell you your extension. And that's a number that people can call to reach your particular phone. Now, you also have at the bottom of the screen what's called soft keys. And here it says redial, new call, forward all. And that's what it says whenever the phone's on the hook. If there's a call coming in, your soft keys would be different. If you actually on a call, you'd even have a different set of soft keys. So it's very intuitive. You have the options you need when you need them. Now another thing about this screen, it's not a touch screen. So if you actually touch it, you're going to leave nothing but fingerprints. You're going to have to break out the Windex, you know, so watch out for that. But if you want to actually press one of these soft key options, you're going to press these buttons underneath here to select any particular option. Now also, some of the buttons underneath here, we're going to go into detail on that. This button that looks like a gear or a flower, think of it as kind of a menu button. And it actually will show you call history, preferences, uh, phone information, admin settings. You really don't need to worry about that. The two main ones you can need to uh, use at any given time are call history and preferences. Now in call history, if you were to select that, It'll actually give you a listing of all the calls that have been made to that phone or received from that phone or placed from that phone. Basically, it'll hold up to 100 calls in the directory. And uh, after 100, they'll roll off. You always have the latest 100 with the latest ones at the top. And you could scroll down through, through them. And maybe if you missed a call, you can go back and see the call that you missed and actually call them back from the directory. Now, your second option under the Applications menu is preferences. And if you're selecting preferences, you can actually get to ringtone. You may need to change your ringtone option on your phone. It's very simple to do. You would select ringtones and you have about seven or eight different options that you can scroll through here and you could actually play a few of them, get a feel for some different ringtone options that you have. And if you find one that you like, you can hit set on that and you can apply those changes and now every time your phone rings, it's ringing with that particular ringtone. Now, when would this come in handy? Well, if you're in an open area where you have multiple people and multiple phones and you all have the exact same ringtone, it's hard to tell whose phone's ringing. But if you guys select each one, I'll take ringtone one, you take ringtone three, you know, you have a unique ringtone, so you know when your phone is ringing if you maybe stepped away from your desk. So the next button over that looks like a book that's open is uh, your directories menu. And when you go to it and you select corporate directory, which is the second option there, you actually have a corporate directory. Everybody that has a phone number within your phone system for your company is going to be listed in this corporate directory. You may know who you want to call, but you don't know their extension right off. Well, you can actually select the corporate directory and you could enter a first name search or a last name search and you could actually find the person that you're calling, find their extension and then actually call them from the corporate directory. So it's like having a virtual directory right at your fingertips. Hold up, before we go any further, you see that button right there? That is the hold button. So if you ever want to put a call on hold, now you know what to do. So your administrator will supply you with a default password that you'll use the first time you set up your voicemail. And the way you do that is you press the voicemail button, you hear the uh, lovely lady's voice telling you to enter your PIN number followed by pound. At that point you would enter that default password that you were given. Then you'll hear the lady say welcome to Unity Messaging and she'll start talking you through the prompts of setting up your voicemail box. First thing she'll ask you to do is to enter your full name. Once you've recorded that, you can enter your voicemail greeting. Uh, you may have a standard greeting that the company provides or uh, whatever you feel comfortable doing. Hey, I'm not here at the moment, 
please leave a message and I'll call you back when I can. The beauty of this system is that you can record it as many times as you'd like until you get one that you're comfortable with. Once you have one you're comfortable with, you can set that as your greeting. The last thing that the lady will ask you to do is to put in your own password, your own voicemail PIN number. Normally we suggest the four digit number. Make sure it's something that is unique but somewhat secure and easy to remember. You don't want to put it as a sticky note up on your monitor or anything like that. So after you've entered your voicemail password, just listen to the lady's prompts. She'll let you know when you've completed setup. Now once you've done that, let's say you've left for the day or went to lunch or a meeting and you came back to your desk and you notice that this little window at the top of your handset is lit up solid red. Well that's a visual indicator letting you know that you have a voicemail waiting for you. At that time you would just press your messages button and enter your four digit password that you created during setup and listen to the prompts. It's your normal voicemail prompts. It'll say you have one new voicemail waiting, press one to listen to your messages you know that type of thing. You can listen, you can delete messages, you can forward messages to another extension as well. Now at this point there are two ways to complete that transfer. You can do what's called an announce transfer so when you dial that person's extension you wait for that third party to answer and then you announce that you're about to transfer a call to them. At that time, you would press the transfer button again to complete the transfer, and then you can hang up. You've done your job. Now, the second way of completing a transfer would be called a blind transfer. And at that point, you would just press the four-digit extension of the person you're calling or transferring the call to, and then press the transfer button without waiting for that third party to answer. But always remember, regardless of which type of transfer you do, you always start by pressing the transfer button, and end by pressing the transfer button to complete the transfer process. Now there may be times when you need to forward any calls that are coming to your extension. Maybe you're out in an important meeting but you're expecting a call. Well the way to do that is one of your soft keys is actually forward all. And if you were to press that it'll ask for you to enter a number. Now you can actually forward a call internally to another extension of somebody that will answer those calls for you while you are out, or you can actually forward those calls to an external number, maybe your cell phone, so that you are not missing any calls while you are away from the office. So if you're forwarding to an internal extension, you would just dial the four-digit extension, and on your phone it would say forwarded to that particular extension. If you're forwarding to an external number, let's say like your cell phone, you would actually dial 9 to grab an outside line and then your cell phone number and it would say forward it to that number. Now when you get back to your office and are sitting at your desk and you want to accept calls at your desk again it's very easy to toggle the call forwarding off by just pressing the forward all button again and that releases the forwarding. So the next button here that looks like it has three heads on it is really three-way calling or conference calling. And the way to do that is pretty simple. It's very similar to transferring a call in terms of the process. You would start by pressing the conference button and end by pressing the conference button. But let's talk about the in-between. So you have somebody on the line with you and you want to conference in a third party to continue the conversation. You would press the conference button that would put the first person on hold and you would get a dial tone. At that point you can dial an internal extension or an external number and conference them in. Once they answer, you would press the conference button again to join all three onto the one call. Now hopefully you're feeling a lot more comfortable in using your new phone now that you've gone through this training session. But always remember, if you have any questions, iConvergence is only a phone call away. Thanks. Have a great day.